Good afternoon, competitors, coaches, judges, and honored guests. Welcome to CASA 2021 finals presentation, time slot D. My name is Siddharth and I will be your timer today. At this time, I would kindly ask all judges and coaches to ensure your audio is muted. As a reminder, the CASIT Organizing Committee is recording the presentations. However, in the case of technical difficulties, the recording may be cut off. So coaches, you are welcome to record on your own devices, so long as you do not share your recording outside of your team. It, it is now my pleasure to announce to you and introduce all of our judging panel. First, we have Duke Indersigmini, the Director of Positive Play at EA. Next, we have Diane Lapierre, the Chief Information Officer at Absolute Software and the Chapter Board President at CIO Association of Canada, Vancouver. Next, we have Peter Holoka, the Director of Educational Technology at West Point Gray Academy and the Chapter Vice President at CIO Association of Canada. Next, we have Brendan McCabe, the Senior Account Executive at Microsoft. And finally, we have Steve Penton, the Director of Consulting Services at CGI. It is also my pleasure to introduce to you the presentation facilitator, Peter Tingling, who is the Associate Dean for the Undergraduate Programs at the Beatty School of Business at SFU. We are excited for your presentation, but before we begin, we would like to remind you of the presentation guidelines. You will have 20 minutes to present your solution. At the conclusion of your presentation, judges will have 10 minutes to ask questions and at the end of these periods, competitors and judges are not permitted to continue to speak, even if the time ends while they are mid-sentence. I will be using my own device to time the presentations and Q&A period. Competitors, you will be responsible for keeping track of your own time, but I will provide chat warnings at the five, three, one minute and 30 second marks. Please note that the competitors are not permitted to reveal their university, country, or city of origin during or after the presentation. Thank you and good luck. Competitors, you may begin to share screens and begin your presentation whenever you are ready. I will start the timer as soon as you start speaking. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much everyone for joining us this evening as we present our positive play initiative. At Trident Consulting, we think one of the most special things about EA is their ability to create wonderful, unique universes, as well as special communities for all of their gamers. With our Positive Play initiative, we're gonna keep those communities safe and welcoming for everyone involved. Before we get to in anything, I'd like to introduce you to the team at Trident Consulting. We have Sean, Kennedy, Mackenzie, and I'm Anna. First, I'd like to share with you our mission statement for the Positive Play Initiative. We set out to create a healthy social community and a positive play environment by eliminating online harms, reducing unhealthy play, and also reducing cheating. Now I, like many of you surely did over the last year, have developed new hobbies because of the special circumstances we're facing in the world. And one of these hobbies was actually video games. I mean, this is something I love to do with my young nieces. They're four and five and absolutely adorable. Um, but as their aunt, I can't help but be concerned while we're playing these video games of what they're gonna hear on the live feed of other players and maybe what they'll see in the chat. So it was with that that, that we created the Positive Play Initiative. And we have three key steps in this initiative. The first being implementing harassment detection software using perspective API to detect toxic language in our game chat rooms. And from there, uh, using that to eliminate toxicity and rating and reviewing our players to make sure they're following our guidelines and maybe implementing disciplinary actions if needed. And finally, limiting unhealthy play by introducing time sensitive stopping cues to our platforms. Now, there are a few assumptions we had to make to be able to present this solution to you today. The first being that EA is not currently using artificial intelligence to monitor voice chat and game chat. And then that the statistics for harassment among players aged 18 to 45 are on average representative of all age ranges of the gaming community. Next being that the gaming industry will grow by conservative 9.8% year over year for the next four years. And then finally that our respawn dollar increased will be based off of just the 2020 revenue. 
Now we'll dive more into the financial analysis towards the end of this presentation, but I want you to keep these three key numbers in your mind and at the focus of our solution. The first being that there will be a $14.3 million investment in the development of new tech for EA. And this will have a 48% return on investment by the end of 2023. And then finally, that we hope that over 450,000 users previously lost due to harassment will rejoin your platforms. Now the Positive Play Initiative works through three phases. And the first beginning on the left is the initial disturbance in an online game, whether it's over voice chat with the audio or if it's a written message, regardless of the form, bullying is, is still occurring. And so the real value driver behind the positive play initiative is the artificial intelligence being used to detect any of these disturbances. The artificial intelligence system automatically detects these disturbances through two different methods. And the first is being the initial algorithm to convert those speech messages over to a text format. And the second being a machine learning algorithm to score a sentence on the overall kindness or rudeness of the message. So for example, rating a message or a sentence from zero to one on what is the likelihood of this being a rather rude message. And finally, a moderation system to immediately taking it, take action. For example, we can see over on the right side, a warning was received and it was because of a voice message. It went against the community guidelines set in place for that server. And it actually says cyberbullying will result in a kick from the server if it continues to occur. And so let's take a look at, at the data flow. And what I wanna highlight especially is the two images down on the bottom of our screen. We have the IBM API speech to text, as well as the perspective API rating. Um, now let's just define API real briefly. It stands for application programming interface. And, but the lingo isn't necessarily important. What I really wanna highlight here is that it basically allows two computers to be able to talk to each other. And then looking at the left side, we have the client. So we have, say it's a PlayStation, Xbox, PC. It's communicating back and forth between the EA server host where the game is coming from and the multiplayer are playing. All that's working back and forth. And any audio messages or text messages that are going through that server will be sent into the IBM API and the perspective API. Now the IBM API has the ability to use state-of-the-art algorithms that are powered by the IBM technology to translate any audio messages and convert them over to a text format. From that point, they're actually sent over the perspective API and perspective API is where the magic happens, where it uses machine learning to be able to identify a sense of likelihood of being a rude or say a hateful comment. And the great thing about Perspective API is that it, it continues to learn, it continues to improve. It's, it's based off of thousands of, of online articles and uh, from sources like the New York Times. And it takes all of these together and puts an actual rating, a score. And this rating is sent to the EA data warehouse where it's stored underneath that player profile so that EA is able to go in and say, what is the toxicity level of this player? as well as send this information back to the server host to be able to take immediate moderation action if necessary. And of course, whenever there's data involved, there's always going to be a question of storage and security. Now EA currently uses randomly de generated device IDs for end-to-end -end encryption for any communication between a device and the EA server. We recommend that EA continues to do this for the audio and text messages as well. AEA also currently stores all of their data on existing internal servers. We would recommend that EA would continue to do this to make sure that any data is, state, is safe. The great thing is this won't be a lot of additional storage because EA doesn't have to store the individual audio messages, just the player rating after it's received. So the audio messages go in, are sent to the IBM translator, no longer need them, doesn't increase those storage costs. Finally, the REST APIs, and let's just define REST, that's the representational state transfer. Again, lingo not super important, but I do want to call out transfer, that last piece. And that's a way to communicate between the EA servers and the artificial intelligence software. And by using TLS, so that transport layer security, that's very standard practice for REST APIs. So very standard practice. It's top of, line, top of the line when it comes to end-to-end -end encryption. And it's absolutely going to keep that data safe and in the right hands. 
Once we have that data transferred over to EA, it's in, we would use that then to calculate the toxicity rate. But it's important that we keep in mind what the definition is according to Perspective API. They look at toxicity being anything rude, disrespectful, or unreasonable comments that will likely make someone leave the discussion. When we started working on calculating the player rating, we looked at three different key measurements. The first one being that toxicity level coming from Perspective API. What is the average toxicity threshold by uh, age rating in the game that they are playing, that they are hitting while they're playing? We also looked at the frequency, frequency of the language. How many times did that gamer use toxic language while playing in that one specific game? Lastly, we looked at the count of their past violations. How many times have this, has this player been marked toxic in the past? And I also want everyone to keep in mind that each measurement and age rating of the games is weighted when we calculate that final score. So we can see that on the next slide, where in the top left box, we have set EA's criteria. And so that basically means that if a player hit a 45% average toxicity threshold while playing a game rated for everyone, and it, they hit at least 40, it would be flagged as being a toxic um, amount that they are hitting. So right below that chart is Johnny's raw score while he was playing different games with different age ratings on them. So as you can see for the average toxicity, he was at 76% toxic 75% of the time. And he already has had nine reports on his account just in that mature column. So over to the right, looking at Johnny's final score, you can see that some places he's marked as 0% because he did not go over our criteria. Therefore, his rating by game goes from 18%, 15, 21, and 24. When we add all that up, his final score is 78% on a toxicity scale, which would definitely raise flags for EA. And we would wanna make sure that we are taking steps to have disciplinary action, which we can see on the next slide about our phasing approach to disciplining that toxicity. If this was Johnny's first time um, being flagged as toxic, it would just notify him of that action. Next, if things are not improving and his bad behavior is not getting any better, he would then be muted from his text and voice chat options for the next week. As we go up and the scale gets more red, the disciplinary, disciplinary measures get stronger and we are just really encouraging and hoping to hold our players accountable and creating that safer spaces for everyone involved. And with this process, we would give them the opportunity to better that behavior. But while they are working on that, they would be put into higher toxicity rated lobbies, filtering them out from the other ones and creating better spaces overall. So while we do this, we are not only decreasing the toxicity in our communities, we are also decreasing the amount of online harm that we are seeing. As we are putting these measures into place, holding our gamers accountable, the opportunity for those online harms are decreasing and overall just creating healthier communities, protecting those vulnerable younger audiences for our platform. Another issue that we'd like to address with our positive play initiative is unhealthy play. So unhealthy play is defined here on this screen, but really the crux of it is when video games go from being a fun stress reliever to an unhealthy coping, coping mechanism, excuse me, for individuals. We can address this in a couple ways. So here you see a mock-up of a FIFA loading screen with a screen time monitor in the upper right-hand corner. So the user would be able to go into their profile and input daily, weekly, and monthly screen time goals. And this monitor would allow them to check in on those goals and see how they're doing with their screen time. Another thing that we can implement is time sensitive stopping cues. So where video games and other more recent forms of social media differ from other forms of media is that they lack stopping cues. So say you're sitting down to watch a movie, Eventually that movie is gonna end and you know it's time to move on to another activity. Or if you're reading a newspaper, you reach the end of that newspaper, you fold it up, put it away, and it's time to move on to another activity. But those stopping cues don't always exist when you're playing a video game or scrolling through social media. A simple notification popping up saying, hey, you've been playing for an hour, Do you, would you like to continue? Or is it time to move on to another activity? We can limit the amount of unhealthy play for gamers on EA platforms. 
Now that we've discussed the solution, let's talk about implementation and give an overview of the timeline. Now, it is a bit of an aggressive timeline to implement this, but we're confident that EA will be able to handle this with the aggressive approach of immediately diving into integrating the Perspective API and the Speech Detect API in Q2 of 2021 and having the ability to not only use internal developers within the EA system to customize this, but also contracting out to any outside developers as well. In Q3 2021, in-game notifications is an easy thing to automatically put in to the servers and promote that healthy play. And then moving into Q1 2022, the full program should be available to launch that beta testing phase through a phased approach of having four steps and you know, accumulating each 25% or so area of the servers to launch these toxicity ratings and action implementation. Finally, in Q2 2022, begin that full rollout across the servers of EA for the solution to detect that harassment through artificial intelligence and begin that moderation process. And in Q3 forward of 2022, continuous improvement on the solution. Now we have identified several risks that come with the solution as well as provided strategies to mitigate the risk. The first risk that we've identified is the European data protection laws. And we've noted this as a minor impact with a almost certain likelihood. Now, European data protection laws, this sets limits to the type of data that organizations can really collect and also states what they can do with it. A way to mitigate this risk is by using personal data control measures. And this moves it from minor to unlikely. This is just giving users the ability to see where their data is being used and actually giving the, them the access to be able to opt out of data. A second risk is the language availability. And this refers to the prospective API. So what languages are currently available for translating to a score to rank the rudeness level. This is currently available in six major languages, but EA has a global reach. We recommend mitigating this risk by partnering with Perspective with EA developers to actually continue the machine learning and develop additional languages, moving this from over to the insignificant and likely likelihood. Over to the third risk is our data storage capacity limits. And we recommend mitigating this risk by storing only keywords, only keywords that might be relevant to future initiatives and only the player ranking score, which is tallied and overall just disposing of any audio files to reduce those storage costs. And finally, the last risk that we've identified with the solution is inherent artificial intelligence bias and discrimination as a critical impact and almost certain likelihood. Now, the thing with this risk is that humans are both the problem and the solution with artificial intelligence bias and discrimination. The Perspective API, it's based off of thousands of online articles. It's based off of historical social norms. As a mitigation, we recommend implementing a manual moderation and approval system. So the Perspective API system is actually built in to allow customization to implement that human factor and bring in moderation to review anything that the artificial intelligence system moderates. We here at Trident Consulting understand that it's important for you to be able to track your progress on this initiative so we're providing these three, four key, P, uh, key performance indicators that we have decided that will be the goals for this initiative. Um, the first being a 2.3% respawn of players lost due to harassment by the end of 2023. Based on our calculations and the statistics from the Anti-Defamation League, EA is approximately losing 11.4% of its users every year because of harassment. So we feel like bringing just back 2.3% of these users due to the initiative is really attainable by the end of year three. And then next, a less than 3% false positivity rate of banned accounts through the duration of the initiative. Also in a 20% decrease in overall toxic messages by the end of 2022. And hands in hand with that is an 8% decrease in messages with a toxicity rating of above 0.7 by the end of 2022. And now to get into the financial breakdown of this analysis, we at Trider are recommending that you spend $3.5 million a year on the AI detection software. This is both that Perspective API and the IBM text-to-speech technology. 
And with that, we understand that integrating this into all of your different worlds and all of your software um, is a big task. So we've allotted $14 million to the development and integration of that new software. So you can hire the best consultants to do this or have your team do this in-house as well and save money if you choose to do so. And then in turn, this will allow $65 million of additional revenue by 2023 from the regaining of those lost users. Or if you want to put it in different terms, it would be a $40 million increase in net income over the next three years. We also see future opportunities with this solution and the data that we are collecting from these chats. Um, so we could detect cheats with some keywords being implemented into the chat features to detect unfair play. We can also drive insights, so creating those user stories. So maybe pairing users with similar interests together in a lobby so they can make even better community. And then finally, targeted ads. Maybe you have a new game coming out in the near future and someone's raving about it in a chat room. And maybe that'll just pop up on their home screen the next time they log into your games. We are so excited to talk with you today about the Positive Play Initiative, and we are really proud of the solution we came up with as a team. We have those three key points, so the AI detection, a player of use software, and then finally, a healthy play to promote better community for EA users and EA games. And with that, what questions can we answer for you? Thank you for your presentation. Please wait a moment while I prepare the timer for a questions and answers period. Judges, you have 10 minutes to ask questions. You may now begin. Um, first off, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Um, it was really good. Uh, a couple of things I liked right off the top. Um, the, the, the rating for players uh, is something we're exploring. Um, again, we have a lot of games and, and while the crossover isn't huge, um, you do see some. And so just trying to capture that across our portfolio uh, is important and something we're thinking about right now. Um, something I haven't seen from the other groups, which is again, really good to see is the through line th from the player rating to the disciplinary matrix. So often we think about the front end technology, the front end experience, but then it has to make sense to the user, right? So it, when you have a disciplinary matrix that's aligned to a review score or a rating score, um, I, I like that you thought through that through line storage. Uh, feels minor, but super important. You know, there's 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 laws in the states as well in terms of how long we can keep uh, um, uh, certain data stored for. Um, but as you said, the rating would sit outside of that because once we have the data, analyze the data, stick the rating on the player, we don't need that data anymore. So that was really smart and um, exactly where we're, where our heads are at. Um, I like the the evolution of, of goals added to playtime. So right now we have the playtime feature in FIFA, but it's just, um, you know, here's what you've been doing. Here's what you've been spending. Here's what you've been playing. The ability to establish goals um, and, and prompt, again, those automated nudges. So automated nudges was another thing that I really liked um, because that doesn't require any data. We could set thresholds within games. Um, so if you are disrupted by disconnecting in Madden, five times the nudge hits on the sixth six time, just reminding you that um, uh, of what you're doing. Because self-awareness is, is an issue in terms of uh, people see games as an individual experience, not recognizing that they're always um, in, a, in, a, in a shared digital space in, in a, on a large majority of cases. So lots of good stuff there. Um, I think from a, from a question perspective, um, you know, you, you, you spoke to sort of the problems and reacting to them, but you didn't go into sort of like game design itself. So, um, you know, uh, one of our games, Apex Legends, uh, recently patented a completely new communication system where you don't need voice, you don't need text. Um, it's just our ping system. So you aim at a, at a, at a, an item on the map, you hit a trigger and the character in the game speaks the relevant um, contextual cue. So is there any reason you didn't look at the game design infrastructure itself and only looked at sort of the, our ability to react to what's happening. Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I think simply put, it was a little bit out of our wheelhouse and not something that we were really familiar with as a group. Um, we felt more comfortable playing with the reactive uh, detection than the prevention, I guess. 
cool. Yep, yeah, totally makes sense and <laughs> totally fair. I've got one. Um, in in terms of the um, the player ranking over time, and is did I understand correctly that that's also tied to player matching, so that I'm I'm working in you know segments or silos of people that are in similar ranks to me. I wasn't 100 percent clear on that. I was wondering if you could just expand on it. And then my second question of this broadcast quickly: Can I improve my score over time if I've been horrible and then I learn and I start to become a better human? Can my score go the other way too? And how does that happen? Yes, and yes is the short answer to both of those. Um, Anna, if you want to go into the main slide deck, go to the uh, disciplining toxicity. We can just look at that timeline again. So, um, sorry, I'm just processing your question really quickly again. So. Um, yes, yeah, so you would be the players would be filtered into different lobbies depending on that toxicity score. So um, for the games that are rated for everybody, that threshold is set lower since it should be a more welcoming community for anyone that's playing that game. So you could not get away with as much in that game versus playing a game that's rated as mature. So based on that and averaging everything out based on those different ratings, uh, that score would then determine where we're going to put you in different lobbies. And, and, and again, that would be like a temporary uh, disciplinary action dependent on if they are improving or if it's getting worse or staying the same as is. I kind of thought about it in the way that um, academic probation works when you're not improving your grades and they, you need to be held accountable. You have these checkpoints with your advisors. And I can, we took that approach while working on creating this system. And to answer the other part of your question, yes, you can improve and you can have a better score. Uh, it's just contingent upon if you choose to really change your own behavior. And again, we wouldn't, the goal isn't to kick people off of EA's gaming system. That is not the goal. We want to keep our gamers, but we want to make sure that while we're doing that, we are giving you the option to create safer and healthier environments for everyone and not um, holding on to those toxic players if we really don't need them. Thank you. I've got a, a two-part question. Um, you talked about opt-outs uh, in the, um, when we were talking about uh, the data protection. Um, if, if a player wants to opt out does that mean that uh, they lose their rating or they lose their rankings or you know how does how does opting out um, affect their rating and also um, in terms of how could you inform that player of how they arrived at that rating if you're using AI technologies Absolutely. Happy to answer that. If you want to go to actually the very first slide in the appendix, the GDPR slide, which is number one. So this just very briefly summarized GDPR, that European data law covers a lot of things, right? Um, it, specifically with like that preserving the rights of the individual to access the information, limiting the automation, removing the data. A lot of it is related to very personal data. So name, data, the birth, ID numbers, IP, all of these types of things. If we actually just go to the very next slide after this one, we took a look into the EA data collection policy. So actually within the terms of service, and this states that EA may collect and store data, of course. And if we actually drill down in this, I won't make you read the um, usage of the data, but I'll just summarize that it does allow uh, gameplay and usage statistics as well as system interactions by de-identifying these from any, you know, sort of actually tying it to the player other than for the moderation. It's an easy way to uh, not actually inflict any uh, judgment on the EU GDPR. So then doesn't, isn't the um, profile though, or isn't the uh, um, rating associated with a specific individual? Absolutely, yeah. And, and I guess I should clarify 
the opt-out would allow for those future opportunities of using the data. So opting out of being able to, for example, say there's some keywords that's being used in the chat, opting out of those types of collections and really specify that, that's actually required under the EU as well as specifying those. Now for the second criteria for the moderation, since there's an easy way to de-identify that from the user and only use it for the moderation aspect, it's not tying any of that personal information other than for the gameplay specific scenarios. I'll ask another I have one. a question. Oh, oh, no, go ahead, please. I was okay. Just... I have a question about the um, uh, the the stopping cues. I thought that was you know well makes sense. Sort of like Netflix and all those good things. Um, the way you provided the kind of the, the the sliding scale on the toxicity. Have you thought any more about the person who continues to press yes, yes, yes? I want to continue and. You know, so it's a good it's a good reminder for the non addictive. I'm not sure the truly game addictive person would would actually respond to the cue in the way that we would eventually want that to happen. So any thoughts around that? Yeah, and that's a great thought. And I guess the first step here is just informing, and we don't really have the ability to change that behavior unless we got really invasive. So we can't reach out and turn the console off for them. But if we can inform them and at least let them know, I know maybe I don't necessarily have an addictive personality, but when I get that pop-up on my Netflix that says, hey, uh, you've been watching for this long. Do you maybe want to stop? I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't even realize that I've been watching for so long. So um, our hope and our belief is that those reminders um, will just add a little bit of information and just maybe allow people to be a little bit more cognizant. Thank you. All right, thank you for your questions and answers. And thank you to our competitors for your presentation and to our judges for your insight and expertise. Competitors and coaches, at this time, you may leave. <laughs>